Do you own a 3D printer with an AC mains powered bed? Then you should probably watch this. I very recently reviewed the TiVo Tornado 3D printer. I found compared to the CR10 which it's based off, one of its main performance advantages was the heated bed. This is because it uses a solid state relay and it regulates mains AC power to a silicon pad underneath the bed, making it heat up extremely fast. But the question is, is it safe? Now before I start, a quick disclaimer. Working with mains voltage is extremely dangerous. If it touches you, it can shock you and it can kill you. The aim of this video is to make your printer safer, but don't think that it's going to be perfect. The mods I'm gonna show you will improve things, but they won't make it foolproof. So please be diligent in periodically checking your cables to make sure everything is in good condition. I'm not liable for any injuries or damage or anything else you get from owning or modifying this printer. So as I was saying, as the printer comes, there's no strain relief on the cables for the AC heated bed. The Creality Ender 3 and the Prusa Mark 3 both have strain relief built into the corner of the bed for their 24 volt systems. Let me show you why the lack of this on the Tornado is definitely a problem. See this motor and wire? They used to be attached. In under 30 seconds of wiggling, the wire went back and forth, it work hardened and then it snapped off. Now of course this is an exaggerated example but the principle still stands. It's important to know that the tighter that you have the bends, the more movement that you have, the more likely it is to snap. Now it's unlikely but it is possible that the wires split out from the rubber sheathing and then as soon as they touch the frame, the entire frame is live. This means as soon as you touch the printer, you're going to receive a pretty nasty shock. Our aim is to add strain relief to the TiVo Tornado so we can control the angle that it comes out and we don't have any sharp bits unsupported. We want a nice arc that we're going to get to move back and forth very smoothly. At the end, we're going to tidy up the rest of the cables and even fit a BL touch so I can get all the cables how I want them in one go. I found some appropriate parts on Thingiverse. The links are in the description below. I also managed to print them in gold X3D PLA and that's a perfect match for the new black and gold TiVo Tornado. So once you've printed the strain relief parts and the oversized bed leveling knobs, we're ready to start the installation. We're going to start by securing the top of the bed leveling screws with an Allen key and unscrewing from underneath. Our strain gauge simply slots on and then we feed the bolt up from underneath. I'm using these soft fibrous washers to protect the bottom of the glass and then I'm using lock nuts, doing it up fairly tight but not so tight I have a risk of cracking anything. I now remove the flimsy plastic conduit and I replace it with this really rugged cloth sleeve. It's fully enclosed which means it has no gaps and if you undo the three little screws on the plug that goes into the main board you'll be able to get enough freedom to just slide it down so the whole thing is completely encased. The cable ties are flat across the surface and going across the cloth sheathing, not the cable in any way at all. I used a vise as a press to put in the factory nuts into the new 3D printed parts and then I fitted them but I found the springs were a little bit wrong so I reduced to a smaller spring that accounted for the lock nut underneath and I found this to be ideal. Checking our strain relief seems to be working quite well. It's controlled in the direction it goes and there's no more tight angles. But so far we have a much improved situation with strain relief. All of our wires are held nicely inside a high quality piece of sheathing and that should stop abrasion and things like that wearing through and cutting into the wires. This means we're ready to turn our attention to grounding. It is grounded from factory which means if there's a fault in the power supply it's going to trip the circuit breaker and turn off the whole printer. What we want to do is make it so the frame of the printer is also connected to that earth. So any potential problems down the road will also cut off the circuit breaker. We start by setting our multimeter to continuity and we can see when it holds still, it changes from a one to any number whenever the two are connected. Now it seems like the coating on the metal parts stop it from being conductive, but if you press just a little bit harder, the tips will do enough to make it conductive. So don't be fooled. If we secure the bolt underneath with an Allen key, we can then use a socket to remove one of the screws holding on the top plate of the bed. I've now got some thick gauge wire and got a ring terminal and I've crimped it on and I'm simply tightening it up and then I'm planning out the loop that I want to happen. If I do a loop, it's going to stop it from kinking. I cut it to length and I put on some more high quality cloth sheathing, the aim being to stop any type of abrasion from wearing through and cutting into the wires. You want to scrape some of the surface just to help with conductivity and then after that you can put in another pre-crimped terminal on the other end, test the range of motion, Nothing is buckling and the two are now connected, which we verify with the multimeter by touching a screw on the mainframe and a screw on the bed, and we can see that the two are attached. Now here's proof that this machine is earthed, and if I connect it to the earth pin, it's grounded to the power supply as well as the bolts that mount the power supply underneath the main unit. So that's what I'm going to use because it's more convenient. Simply undo one of the screws and I've got a smaller pre-crimped terminal that I'm going to attach. I'm going to face it out to the right when looking from the front, because that's going to go straight to the frame. 
that's nice and neat. So it's now time to use the rest of my cloth sheathing, coat this one. Once again, we want to stop any type of rubbing back and forth from cutting through and severing the wires. I use one of the bolts underneath the end stop and now everything is connected. I can go from the earth pin to anywhere metal on the printer and it's all connected. For about an hour's worth of work plus printing, our printer is now a whole lot safer from the risk of electrocution. That's pretty nice, but I wanted to do all of my wiring in one go, so I figured it was time to install my BL Touch. I'll upgrade the fan duct later, so for now I just picked a simple mount on Thingiverse that works without changing anything else. Now I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here because I've already made three different videos on installing a BL Touch on various printers. What I will show you is how I routed the cables and mounted the sensor. We're going to start by removing the two screws that hold on the factory fan shroud, and that's all we need to do. This is a really convenient design that we're using here. After that, we're going to feed through the cables for the BL Touch. I'm using a 1.5 meter extension version from Aurorum in Australia, and it ended up being perfect. One meter would be too short, so make sure you get two meters if you can't get a one and a half. We simply fix the bracket back by putting in the two screws, nice and firm, and then we're ready to plug in our BL Touch and test how well it fits. I decided to run my cabling inside the factory plastic conduit, and it kept it quite neat. I had a little bit of electrical tape here and there. Now this is a really nice tool for setting the height on your BL Touch. You move the nozzle down till it's touching the bed and then you slide this underneath and that's the height you need to mount your BL Touch. It aims for about 8mm. For me, I needed around two M3 washers on the front and back mounts and that got this height exactly where I needed it to. I tested and I made sure it was still good after tightening the thing up and that part of the install was done. Next, I tucked in the cables the whole way through the conduit and I used some electrical tape to hold it shut and then some cable ties and I made sure nothing was pulled tight so it was going to break later on. Here's my final cable management setup. I joined the extruder wires on with cable ties. I had the BL Touch cables poking out in line with the grommet and going into the main box. After a lot of searching, I found a diagram for the MKS Gen L that was absolutely perfect. The forum thread was in French and I'm pretty sure the person was having trouble, but the wiring diagram that they attached was perfect for me. I found with a 1.5 meter extension cable, the BL Touch plugs went perfectly into place without any wiring changes at all. Can't get easier than that. I mainly based my firmware changes on the TiVo download of Marlin. And while it wasn't the newest version, it was new enough to have things like thermal runaway protection and linear advanced support that was good enough for me. In terms of the changes I made to the firmware, I simply retraced my steps from my advanced BL Touch video, but I set up the Z offset as I showed in my recent Ender 3 BL Touch install video. The only other differences here were setting a 5x5 probing grid. Yes, it's slower, but I figure if I'm going to do a really long print, what's an extra 30 seconds or so at the start? The offset I had for the sensor was minus 43 for X and minus 19 for Y. And that's it. All in one night, we have fixed the cable management somewhat, we've added strain relief, we've grounded the frame, we've made the printer a whole lot safer, we've also added auto bed leveling. I printed this awesome vase to check if everything was working and it turned out just great. Now I still plan to make this an all-in-one printer, but that's going to take understandably a little bit more time to develop and make all the parts. My aim is to make it completely 3D printable, so anyone that owns this printer can print the parts and get everything hidden underneath the bed, so it's safe and convenient. In the meantime, I can print with increased peace of mind, but just another reminder that none of these things are foolproof, and you should have a maintenance schedule to make sure everything is still safe moving forward. What's your opinion on the AC heated bed for this printer? Do you think the mods I've shown make it acceptable to own it? Is it safe enough? Let me know in the comments. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks for watching and happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.